really need to be careful about that. God says, love your enemies, pray for them, feed them. Don't lift your hands to me and tell me you love me when there's people out there you don't love. Bless God um, for this evening. Give glory to God. Alice and Lisa, hello. Nice to see you. Lads are not on yet. Um, looking forward to, to seeing them. Jan, lovely to see you. Mario, good to see you. Um, I'd like to... Aina Esther, it's lovely to see you. Congratulations. I'm not making anything public unless you let me and you'll allow me to, to do, do that. that. Uh, evening, Jimmy. Nice, nice to see you. See you. Um, Aina, I'd like you to come on uh, maybe Friday evening. Have you got Skype? And come on and give us a testimony and maybe show us a bit about you know what's actually happening in Pakistan and where you are. Um, I would like to do that. So if you can text me or message me later on or whenever you can. Um, and we'll arrange for you to give testimony of what you're doing over there so people can see um, who we're going to start supporting very soon. So um, once other people come on, <coughs> I'll talk to them about. So the, the, the young lady that you see on now, the evangelist Lane and Esther, this is the group of people, this is the ministry that any funding that we do put in for. Um, Tom, nice to see you. Audrey, nice to see you. Um, Aina, um, Esther is the ministry that we are going to support. Myself and her husband um, help children. And, um, you yeah, know, so that, that's what we want to really do is help here to help these children in Pakistan. God bless you Leslie, it's lovely to see you. Um, so keep please praying for us um, and for what I want to do. I want to thank um, <clears throat> Pastor Finney for, for doing last night at the last minute for me. Um, things cropped up here and um, I just wanted to, well, can I make a confession? I want to show you where I was. I've just come back from the Bahamas, so I took some photographs while I was over there. Hello, Paul. Gillian, lovely to see you. James, lovely to see you. I've got something to say to the lads in a bit. So that's where I was. I've just flew back to the Bahamas. God took me over there, but there was nobody there because the beaches were empty. So that's where I was. So I thought I'd show you that. Um, where, so I've just come back. Um, lovely to see you lads um, I want to thank the lads so much um, Gainer hello so I want to thank the lads in the centre I really do from the bottom of my heart um, we will remember you in, your, in remember you in our prayers please message me um, as soon as you can um, and Aina, and we'll have a chat. Pastor Phineas, nice to see you. Nice to see you. So, <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I love God. You know, I really do. I'm so in love with them. It's unbelievable. Um, you know, I am. But let's, I want to thank the lads so much. Um, they've, they've given a donation that we can send off for the children in... Pakistan, 
Um, thanks so much, Jimmy. It really is so much appreciated. He, he sort of leads these kind of things for finances. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to say how much he owes me, but he owes me some money. So, Jimmy, what I want to do is I want you to don't pay me anything back. I want you to keep hold of that and because you, you've donated so much, not just to this course, but to other causes. So, a thumbs up. So, if everybody can give him a nice thumbs up, because the lads in the centre are doing brilliantly. They're supporting the work that um, we support for God. And as I say, when we get in and on to give testimony and I maybe mean, show us, share with us what's actually going on there, um, it'll be really good. So, again, to the lads in the centre and James for leading it all, may God bless you. I really, really truly mean that. Um, they're so generous, absolutely are. Um, so, again, Thank you um, very much, lads, and may God truly bless you for what you give to the kingdom of God. And I really, I mostly mean that. Um, so thank God again for them. Well done, lads. No, seriously, well done, lads. Um, they they have sacrificed this week, um, and I want to thank God for them. And maybe they'll keep it going, you know, um, yeah, maybe they keep it going, but <clears throat> it, it's really good. I only caught a bit of pastors last night, and it was really inspiring. Um, different things happened, and I had to, to do some stuff. Um, but I will be watching it. I will catch up on it. These videos go on YouTube as well. Over the next couple of days, I'm putting a package together where we can go live on YouTube again, because there's people that want to see us but that are not actually on this there's other programs we can go on i think there's up to about 30 different outlets that we can go on um live i think it's over two million people so we'll be putting that package together hopefully in the next couple of days <coughs> because the more people that see the gospel for me it, 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 it's better for that thanks very much for everybody that's following us and subscribes on um, YouTube, really wonderful. Um, what I want to do is, praise the Lord, Uganda, Uganda, it's lovely to see you brother. We will, <laughs> listen, you don't even ask to ask us to consider you in our prayers. We've got people in our fellowship where we do come together from all over the Africa, from all over the world. Um, so we have not got a chance to forget, praying for everybody and anybody. Um, we do love to pray as a church. Uh, Utum Baras, I don't know where you're from, but may God bless you, may he welcome you. And we hope and pray that you get something from this fellowship. Um, it really is so important for us. I've got a short word, but what I really want is, I want you to ask uh, if you need prayer, um, we would like to pray while we're on air for you yeah so we don't need to know the full circumstances um, we just need to know basically what you need prayer for <clears throat> and we'll pray on air tonight and I want to do that every couple of nights uh, because I believe it's really important and I know the lads are getting excited because they are in isolation um, and I know this is why they're allowing these gifts to go to other people because they understand that there are children that's in isolation and they want to support them. Again, thank you Jimmy and thank you lads, um, really for your generosity, really is, bless the Lord for you, um, I really truly do mean that. So Jimmy, your debt's wiped out with me. That all right, we're clear because of what you've done. So I've got to ask with you if that's all right, yeah? You know, you've, you've led by example and come on. <coughs> so if you need prayer or your family needs prayer, this is the time to start putting it on, yeah? If I miss it, please somebody come back and remind me. Um, 
of what it is and where it is. Just really want to know how everybody's coping. You know, I can honestly say myself, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really fantastic. I feel really um, infused by what God has done in me in this time. My relationship with God is getting better. It's more relaxed. It's not really stressful. Um, and this is a time for, for Jesus and me to come together. And so this is what I, I look for in everything that I actually do. Um, <laughs> keep up the good singing. Yeah, it's good, isn't it, Jan? You know, um, I'm just... We interfere people to stop me. <coughs> okay, yes, we will pray for Paul. Um, I don't know a bit of pressure as yet. Maybe you can see these um, for people to keep pressurizing them to get married. You know, let God do that. This is what we do as Christians. We're quick to judge people. Yeah. Yes, the Bible does say we, we need to get married, we need to come together as one, we need to do all this thing. God knows this. And everybody knows this, that's Christians. <coughs> Excuse me, but we're going to pray for Paul. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, I ask that you touch Paul right now, Lord God. And that, Father, you stop people trying to interfere in their relationship with God, Lord God through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, would you come in the power of your Holy Spirit and would you minister to both of them? Father, it's their relationship with you, not our relationship. It's their relationship. So Father, I ask that people don't put them under pressure to get married. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you bless their ministry as well, Lord God. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you fulfill every desire that they have in their lives, that your glory may abound in them. Father, I ask that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, let's, let's not judge people all the time. We need to know circumstances before we can make a spiritual judgment. Yeah? And we don't know what the circumstances around every situation actually is. So for me, it's important uh, because she is really struggling at the minute. Thanks, Pastor. Yeah, <coughs> we've got a, excuse me, every time I come to the room, starts coughing, being a great all day. I'm all the same all day. It's only when I come on here or I'm preaching in church, I start to cough. It's not demonic, please. You can pray for me cough to go and, and I'm happy for you to do that. But there's no sin in my life like that. There's nothing like that. It's just it's just what happens every time I come on. So I thank Jesus. So um, Sean, um, his sister lost um, I think a partner or whatever it is. So we need to pray. Please pray for him. Father, we pray for Sean right now. Father, I ask in Jesus' name. I not only pray for him, pray for his sister. I pray, Lord God, that your peace that surpasses all understanding, Lord God, comes over that girl right now. Father, I do not know whether she's a Christian or a non-Christian. What I do know, Lord God, you've called us to pray, to seek your face for other people, Lord God. So, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that you do that, that you bring a peace, a love and a joy, even in this, Lord God. Father, there... Your glory is worth more. I want to go back to Paul. <coughs> Father, I ask in the name of Jesus that nobody comes against this relationship with Paul. Lord God. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. Father, we break any anything that's coming against these people, Lord God. Father, if you've brought somebody together, no one but no one but no one will cause this any rift, Lord God. So I thank you, Jesus, for what you're actually doing. Father, bless this couple, Lord God. Father, I'm asking that you come in, here, in the power of your Holy Spirit, Father, and you bless them. Uh, bless you. Yeah, thanks. That's all right. Um, uh, happy birthday to James. Oh, yeah, it's James's brother. James. 
Happy birthday. I'm not going to sing it for you. Um, but happy birthday. Is it today, tomorrow? I don't know, but happy birthday anyway. <coughs> um, yes. Uh, yeah, thank God. So if you, I say, if you want prayer, please come on. And we will pray again and again. To, you know, you don't have to come on and just take one prayer. We're here to pray for people and to see people um, come closer to God. Yeah, so that's the main thing. For those that are just joining us and just coming on, um, thank you again. We're going to keep the donations going um, for, for people that we want to support. Um, Sandra, lovely to see you. Uh, Shia Zabab, uh, Thomas, lovely to see you. Um, and any other people that have sneaked on without me knowing because I've got to go. Oh, and Reese is on. Reese, nice to see you. Have you had a shave or is that a new photograph or an old photograph? Lovely to see you. Yeah. I hope you're doing well. <clears throat> I really do. I hope you're doing well. Please pray for the lads that are in the centre, the lads that have left the centre. Uh, yes, I definitely will, uh, James. I'm gonna we're gonna pray about that pretty soon, to be honest with you. Uh, so we've got a young Aina Esther on. Um, she is from Pakistan, and. We've been getting a lot of input for us to support loads and loads of people and ministries. <clears throat> and we was, I was supposed to personally go over to Pakistan to be with this couple and um, to do a seminar for leaders and an evangelistic and prayer, <clears throat> <clears throat> prayer meeting. But unfortunately, the coronavirus came on and I couldn't do that. So depending, depending on when, excuse me, on when I, I took some tissue, on when anything lifts, everything lifts, I, I will be heading over there and be taking some, could maybe one or two people with me. So they get the experience of actually knowing what it's like. So I've asked her if she can come on maybe Friday or Saturday evening, if she can get all the Skype and give us a testimony and especially, again, for those that have only just come on, thank the lads again for the donations. Um, no, seriously, really do. Whether it's small or it's large, I know it's not a lot of donations that we've had, but everything helps. You know, everything really, truly, truly helps. And these people, these children, these families, they... They get very little to live on. I'm seriously, maybe twenty dollars a month, twenty quid, twenty five pound a month to live on for a family. So we need to be aware <clears throat> of what we're actually doing, you know, for God. And so it's all for him. So that's the ministry that we are going to support. We're going to support this young couple for the work that they do in God to reach out to these families. Um, so if anybody else is looking for support, um, unless I become a millionaire, or somebody puts millions of pounds in the bank, we can't support everybody. And um, even before we went live, we were speaking to this young couple. Um, I got some good news off her, and I can't say it unless she gives me permission to, to do it. But I want to congratulate her and her husband again. And I pray that God really <coughs> blesses her. Anyway, um, we're going to pray for the centre. That's the rehabilitation centre that we, we all belong to. Um, a lot of people are on site for the staff and, and different things. We're going to pray that the enemy doesn't come in all the time and, and steal and take away from what God is actually doing in there. So, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, for every lad that's in the centre. I pray for all the staff. I pray, Lord God, that your wisdom, your discernment, Father, is in that centre. I pray in the name of Jesus that you put a hedge around that centre, Lord God, that you protect 
the lands and the, the staff from the enemy coming in to steal, Lord God. Father, we know that you allow it to happen sometimes to test us. And Father, that's fantastic. We love it. And we're going to rejoice in that, Lord God. But Father, you're also, also saying in Psalm 23, verse 5, that in, in the midst of everything that's going on in our lives, Father, you're going to come in. You're going to sit with us beside still waters. And you're going to sit and eat with us, Lord God. Physically, spiritually, Lord God. You're going to sit there with us. And all this battle is going to go on around us. And you're going to bring us peace. So I thank you for that, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. May God be blessed and may you be blessed as well. You know, we do serve a really, really great God. His name's Jesus. Whether you believe in Jesus or not believe in Jesus, that's fine. We are going to pray for you even if you don't believe in Jesus. We're going to pray that God comes in and breaks into your life and transforms you into the creation that God really wants for you. And for me, all oh, Tom, been watching you on um, your online, really, absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry you couldn't come over to us, <laughs> um, you and Billy. We've been really looking forward to seeing you. That's Pastor Tom. Um, what can I say about this man? Um, he is. What can I say? Is one of the nicest pastors that I've met. Now I say this because I'm sure in his household, the same as my household, we have our ups and downs. Yeah. And so, but I can honestly say every time I, I've met him, I've met his family, I've met the church people in Ireland, Northern Ireland, Elon Bally Sillon, that's where they're from. And um, I've been so, so blessed with them. I, 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 you know, it, it's one of the churches. <clears throat> I don't know about pastors. Uh, we've got a couple of pastors on here. But when I go to another church, get invited to go to another church, to preach, I really get nervous because what comes to my mind, God, these men of God are much better preachers than me. And it's something that goes through me. I don't know whether it goes through everybody else, but that's what goes through me. And so we should have had Tom and Billy to come over. We're looking forward to the pit and come over to bless us and to bless the, the lads in the centre. Um, to talk to them um, so but we will <clears throat> we're still looking forward to them coming over as soon as all this coronavirus um, stops and we can start to travel again I'm looking forward to going over <coughs> I'm looking forward to sending the team over because um, I can't go everywhere now um, so yeah I'm, I'm still isolating in Liverpool I've got the staff in Hartlepool doing a, a tremendous job Absolutely tremendous. And um, I thank God for them. Um, we're going to pray for Tom now and the Ballysillan, Elon Ballysillan in Northern Ireland. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus. Father, Father, I pray for Tom, Pastor Tom. I pray for his wife, Lynn. I pray for his children. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, physically, financially and spiritually, Lord Father, that you... Holy Spirit touches that family right now, Lord God. Father, I thank you for that fellowship, that church, that, or the body that meets together in a church building. Father, I ask in the name of children, Father, Jesus, Father, that you touch that church. You grow it, Lord God. And when he's on, Lord God, when he's on and he's witnessing about you, Lord God, Father, send tons and thousands of people to listen to your word, Lord God. Father, I'm asking for his perfect health with not just him, but with his family and the people in the church, Lord God. Father, I, I ask you to tremendously bless Elam Bally Sillan, Lord God. And please, Lord, bless Northern Ireland. Father, you know, I'm, I, in case other people get jealous, bless Ireland, Lord God. And bless the people there. May they be blessed. Father, you are glorified in everything you do in that church. 
Um, we give God the glory. We give God the honour for everything that's going on. Um, welcome to everybody that's come on. Um, I don't know Victoria Catherine yet. I don't know if she's in Ireland or I think this may be with a church you have to watch. And then there's another fellow there, Gene Valkyrie. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Amy, okay, I'll check it out. <coughs> well, let me tell you the way we are. We can have teaching after teaching after teaching of what God wants us to do. And it's great to get teaching. And it's great to listen to different pastors and it's, it, it's great to, to listen to all this. But my comment is that my uh, field of view in what we do in the kingdom of God is have we done the first thing that God has asked us to do? Because we can hear all the teaching and the preaching and it can be absolutely fantastic. But have you done what God's called you to do? Have you done it? It's no good going on to the second course or the main course if you haven't even eaten the first course. And this is why Christians get frustrated because they haven't sat down and fully digested the first course that they're actually doing. Now, while people are on, I don't know everybody that's come on, I know quite a lot of them. Um, let me say something to you. <clears throat> We're Christians who happen to believe in Jesus. Our desire and our hope is that you meet with him. Because if you don't meet with Christ and you don't accept him as your Lord and Saviour, you will never ever go into his presence. No matter how good you think you are or how many old ladies we help across the road, you will never ever go into the presence of God. So that's what these, these, these sessions are about. It's not about either myself or other pastors coming on from the church and preaching to you. We need to know, are you doing what we've already preached? Yeah, that's the main issue that concerns me really in people's lives. And one of the things that we need to do, <clears throat> I want to know if you changed your life. Why have you come on here? What's your motive for actually coming here tonight? If it's not a godly motive, I'd be very careful. Let me say so, I serve a God who absolutely loves me. Not just for who I am, but for my mistakes and everything again, and everything that goes with it. But I will tell you, I will pray for you. And I pray that God does something in your life. Now why am I saying this? Well, God's given me wisdom in these sermons. And I know there's one or two people on here tonight. I know this. That need God. And Without God in your life, you'll never be in his presence. You'll never know what it is to love other people. Do you know loving other people means that you have to bring correction sometimes. And people out there in the world don't like to be corrected. And so if you come on here, I'm not going to butter the gospel of and I'm not going to preach all the time. I'll bring you short words. And if I have to preach, I'll preach. And I'll tell you the truth. But the issue is, have you done the first thing God has asked you to do before you even go on to somebody else? 
to something else. Because you and I in this society today, we're expected, it's like a McDonald's. We're expected to have a Mac Jesus where we can go through a drive-through, pay, pray, uh, pay for it, or say a quick prayer and get it to take away. That's what we're brought up to do and that's what we're brought up to think. People think because we're Christians, we're, we're supposed to help straight away. I know that through some of the things people say. Well, you call yourself a Christian, but you won't take this lad back and you won't do it with this lad. Well, yeah, because we have a wait list and we have people that really want to get better. We have people that come to the centre and if they don't want to stay, they'll go away and blame everybody else for their failure. Yet they profess to know Christ, they've been baptised. And yet they profess to know Christ. It just amazes me, to be quite honest with you. So I'm speaking to the lads as well. You know, they're doing a tremendous job and sometimes they struggle. I and Jay, they love you to see you. They struggle. They're put down as the scum of the earth because they've been alcoholics or ex-drug addicts. Nobody even wants to know them. But I can put a challenge out to anybody on here right now. If I had the lads, or one or two of the lads, walking in the town, and I said to you, pick out the ex-alcoholic or the ex-drug addict, I know without a shadow of a doubt, you would never pick any of our lads. And we've had the BBC into our place, and we've had loads of television and radio in. And they didn't even know who people, they thought some of the lads were staff. We've got one lad who's already finished his first year at university, that's with us. That is set free. Has it been easy for him? Not a chance. It's really difficult. But after, I think it was 21 years, 20 years, he said, this is enough of my life being it the way it was, getting dragged down. I'm going to stick with this. I want to become something in society. I want to change society. And the only way to do that is with a good education. So when you do go to counsel somebody or you want to become a psychologist or a psychiatrist, it's not theory. It's a practical thing. I've been there. I know what I'm actually talking about. Nobody can I. So I believe God wants to change people's lives, change their concepts of who they actually are. So I, 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 in God, I'm really proud of what's happening in the centre. And I'm proud of the church. I truly am. I'm proud of what God's doing. But as I say to them, have you done the first thing that God's asked you to do? When they ask questions, well, what have you done with the answer that I gave you last time? Tell me what it was. If you disagree with me, great. You can disagree with me. We can have a chat about it. But I will only agree to disagree with you at the end of the day. So that's what I get for the lads. And I do love being around them. And um, absolutely, you wouldn't know them. But it only works for those lads that want to push through and do it. If you don't want to succeed in life, you never will. If you want somebody to carry you through in Christianity or life, that's not going to happen. God will let you go one day and say, now it's time for you to walk. Paul talks about it in scripture. Has anybody on there, not the lads, but the women that have had babies, when them babies were born, did they give them a piece of T-bone steak and say, eat that to a brand new baby? They didn't. 
they breastfed them or they give them a bottle. Why? Because we'd have choked them to death. Paul says, some of you are on milk and you need to be on steak, and some of you are on steak and you need to be on milk. But we've got all these fantastic preachers around the world that God has anointed. And the question is that I ask, have you done the first thing that you've been asked to do? Have you done it? Before you and I go on to something else? That's part of what I personally believe God is saying. We're going to go to Scripture in a couple of minutes. Well, we're going now. <clears throat> I'm in um, James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I won't keep you long on it. I don't think people, a lot of Christians, and to be honest with you, with Scripture, let me read this. I'm going to go from, I'll go from verse 1. James, a bond servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect way, and you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives liberally without reapproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like the wave of the seeds, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not a man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, if you and I are truly honest, that really doesn't need explaining. It may need paraphrasing into today's English or the way that you and I speak. But for when I read it, it's quite plain. Count it all joy when you go into various trials. Count it all joy when you have your ups and downs in life, no matter how hard they get. Again, I'm going to keep pushing you back to Psalm 23, verse 5. There in the midst of the battle and what's going on, Jesus will come in. Jesus, I've never read where Jesus says, I'm taking you out of this situation. He never took Job out of the situation. He never took David out of the situation. He never took um, Gideon, it's, it's anybody. He never took them out of the situation. He let them push through. And he come, when they called him, he come into the situation. Do you see? Verse 3, knowing that testing of your faith produces patience. Again, patience. You and I lack a, lack a lot of patience. We want it now. We don't want it next week. We don't want to wait for it. We want it now because that's a society. That's what they say you need. And that's the only thing. That's the difficult thing with this, what they call lockdown, self-isolation, is because we're used to getting what we actually want. And we want to go out there and we want to get it. See the difference? I'm going through this isolation. We've been five weeks, six weeks now. I'm doing this with loads of joy. And I'm serious with you. There's not one day gone past that I've not enjoyed and I'm always saying to Margaret, what day is it? I've lost me days. I don't want to know what day it is. I don't want to know what time it is. Time's just flying past. And I'm really excited that it's happening because I'm using it for the glory of God and I'm using it to benefit myself and my, my family and I. Whereas I can pray and get before God. I'm using it to speak to the congregation when they phone me up. Or when they're texting me or things like that. Absolutely wonderful. I'm doing what God's called me to do. And for me, this is what it's about. Absolutely wonderful. So you want to have patience, grab hold of it. 
Grabble the Nice. Right. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask God, and he gives liberally without me approach, and it will be given to him. We must always ask God for wisdom. We need that wisdom. That's right, like those who wait on the Lord will renew the strength. And there's loads of scriptures around that that really come to that conclusion, JD. Loads, loads of scriptures. He is just unfaithful to forgive me my sins. What God started in 1 Corinthians, what he started in your life and my life, he will finish it. You, may, you and I may think we can run away from some situations. Let me tell you, we'll only go so far and he'll bring us all the way back and we'll have to start again. Listen, and whether you like the change that you're in or you like the situation that you're in, God's going to take you all the way back and then problems and then issues will never go away by changing churches. Listen, there's pastors on here. If if you belong to any of these pastors and you, you're not keen on them, well, you don't tell God that he's made a mistake. Because I'm sure these pastors go to God and say, you've made a mistake with these con this congregation. They're not the ones you promised me, Lord. See, most pastors want the good ones, the cream of the crop. God called us for the sick. And they're the people that I want to talk to. And that's why I'll talk the way I am. When God calls you, he doesn't take away your character. He refines it. And when God calls you, he doesn't. He sends you to a people of not unfamiliar language. Now, for me, that was Liverpool. But that's the English-speaking people as well. Because they can understand. We might all have different accents. and We might say things differently. Or we have sayings or meanings which mean total the opposite to one another. When I first moved to, to Arnipil to, to the ministry, they were talking about bears. I hadn't got a clue what they were talking about. And I was too embarrassed to ask, what are you on about? Me bears. I thought that none of them had children. Because nobody ever talked about children, they talked about bears. You see, it wasn't until I got into the culture and that the way they spoke that I started to understand. They go to Ireland, Northern Ireland, they're, they're worse than art people. But all of it. Because I want to embrace the people of God. I want to embrace what God is doing. Not just in my life, but in your life. And that's what I love about God. Let's carry on. There's six... Uh, listen to this one. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like the wave of the sea driven tossed by the wind. For let not a man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, or a woman, unstable in all their ways. Do you see? Faith is the things not yet seen. But we believe with hope that it's going to happen. Most people don't receive from God even when they pray because they don't believe their mindset has been getting changed from the world. Because the world says you can go on the line online and you can get it straight away. Jesus doesn't work on the internet like that with your prayers and my prayers. And as I've said before, when Daniel prayed, it took 21 days for that angel to come down to answer um, Daniel for what he prayed for. Then he had to call for Michael. He told Daniel, I've got to go and call for Michael to help me get back. You see, some, some, some issues that you and I are asking for may take a long time to get answered. Not because God has not heard you. Because when the angel comes to Dan, he said, from the first time you opened your mouth and you spoke, God heard your prayer and he answered you because he sent me to give you the answer. But most of the time as Christians, you and I are not there when them angels come to answer our prayers. We've gone. And the excuse is, 
you know, God must have wanted me to do that. That wasn't of God, because he would have done it. Because we want it now, we expect it now, or tonight, or tomorrow. But are you and I ready to be able to receive what we've actually asked for? You want to preach to the nations? You want to be a pastor? You want to be a preacher? Preach to one or two at first. We didn't get saved as leaders. And God said, I want you going out there preaching. It, it was pretty quick for me. But I learned pretty quick and I was doing other stuff anyway. So it takes time for God to work in us and to change us and to mould us and shape us into that person that he wants us to be. And it's usually people, certain people that he wants to send you and I to. Because that's the way of God. Now I'm not going to keep going on about, about that. But for me, it's self-explanatory. You don't need anybody to explain them first eight verses to you. You just don't. That's the truth. So when you come on here, I'm going to tell you the truth. Paul ain't got to say what that is. Can you speak English? Because <clears throat> I ain't got a clue what that says. You know, there's people on here that are really reaching people really but in the gutter. But let me say, this is what I'm telling this is what God said to me. I'm not going to give you the full testimony, but this is what God said to me. I said to God one day, um, God, I need your heart. Because all these people you're sending in, um, I, I, you know, what are we doing? And God said to me, what are you talking about? He said, the people I send in, you're not taking. You're picking and choosing who you want. I say, and I, I, it was like a little bit of back and forth from God. But God, we've got to say the right ones in, the ones that we feel like. He said, no, listen. I said, Lord, we're going in the gutter. He said, no, you're not going low enough. I said, what do you mean, Lord? He says, what's happening is you're standing in the gutter, but you're not getting in it. There's people floating past in the gutter that you and I are missing. Whether they want to hear the gospel or they don't want to hear the gospel, you and I are here to preach the gospel. And there's people out there that are reaching people that you and I are not being able to reach. And it's like Aina from Pakistan. You know, I had the privilege of praying with them on the FaceTime um, to just a couple of families. And when I, I, I was looking at it and I was looking outside, I thought, God, we think we're bad. These people have nothing. I think it was about £20, £15 a month. I'm not sure how many rupees it is. It was about £15, £20 a month they have to live on. And they don't get government assistance. So if they're hungry, they're hungry. And you really have to pray. So as I said, I thank everybody for, for what they're doing. Thank the lads again for the great support that they did give. And hopefully... Um, Aina will come on um, and give a testimony so you can get it from the horse's mouth as to, so to speak and learn about it has anybody else got any more prayers any, anybody want us to pray <clears throat> um, do you know the time seems to go so fast when I'm on here just so fast again I say all these go onto YouTube Within the next couple of days, they'll be going live to YouTube and other sources um, around the world. So hopefully, I'm only interested in getting the gospel out. That's what it's about for me. And tonight, it was like fellowship talking to Christians. 
and um, just yeah. share a little bit about our Jesus, really, of who he is and what he is. Um, let's pray for Reese. Um, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray for Reese right now. I don't know what's going on in his life. Father, but I ask in Jesus' mighty name, Lord God, that you touch him where he is now, Lord God, that you meet him where he is and you bring him from where he is out into more light, Lord God, that your glory may arise in his life. Father, I'm asking in Jesus' name that you protect his mind, his heart, Lord God, that you be with him right now, Lord God, that your glory may shine. Father, give him strength to be able to say no and walk in your footsteps. Father, I pray that he gets right into fellowship. I know our church is not open at the moment, but when we get back, Lord God, Father, I ask in Jesus' name, Father, that you touch him in Jesus' name. Anybody else want prayers? Uh, we've got a couple of minutes and then we're going to have communion. We have communion on uh, every meeting that we come on on this. Um, not because we're religious, but because Jesus said it. Jesus said, when every time you come together, do this in remembrance of me. And in our fellowship, we come together quite often, really a lot. So, uh, I pray for um, Tom's children, Abby and Caitlin, pray for them. Father, I pray for Tom, I pray for his children, Abby and Caitlin. Father, I don't know what situation is needed, but Lord, you know. Father, we're just bringing these prayers as incense into your presence, Lord God. Father, whatever the situation is, whatever's going on in, with these young kids, Lord God, Father, I ask that you protect them. You don't just protect them, but you protect, Lord God, their virginities for when they grow up and get really older, Lord God. Father, I ask that you protect their minds, that you protect their bodies, that your glory arises in their lives. Father, pray for Tom for wisdom to be able to talk to them, Lord God. Father, protect these children, I ask in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Keep praying for these people. You know when we go off, try and remember people and faces and keep praying. It really is so important that we do that. Um, that's what it is. So, communion. We do this every time we come together. Because Jesus said, when you come together, do this in remembrance of me. So, we remember that Jesus went to the cross. He was flogged. He died on a cross and he rose again the third day. And that one day, our Jesus is going to come back. And so that's why we do communion. <clears throat> we do it in remembrance of what he did. So <clears throat> I'll give you a minute to, to have your communion. I know our lads in the centre and I know the staff and I know a lot of other people that, that join us. Do like us doing communion, so we do communion. Um, it's not that we're right or we're wrong in the way we do it, we, we just do it. And we have new people coming into the church, and this is what, um, for us, this is the body, this is the church. Um, and it's good to be together. And this is the way that we draw together. Jesus died for you. God sent his son, Jesus, to die, to be whipped, and I was, I would say, slaughtered before he even went to the cross. That you and I may have eternal life with him. I still can't get my head literally around that, whether it's theologically or whatever, I can't really get my head around it. I can sit there and go into tears sometimes, just even thinking about that. Somebody got ripped apart, was nailed to a cross, was there for all them hours. Even his own father left him to suffer for three hours on that cross. And when I started to think about it, all of this, I 
it just would you and I do that for somebody else? Or you and I would say, yeah, I'll die for somebody. Oh, that's great. What about sending one of your children to die for somebody? That didn't like you, that hated you, and they don't even believe in you. Not as easy now, is it, to say things? I don't know where I stand and all that. I really, I wouldn't even like to know. But anyway, I pray that everybody's got communion. And just to prove that I have it all the time, I really do. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, as we break this bread now, Father, in remembrance of what you put and allowed your son to go through, for each one of us that their bodies may be broken and so he may suffer in our place, Lord God. I give you true honour and glory for that, Lord God, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we really truly do thank you. I I can't really put into words what you actually mean to me personally. Father, I find it personally so hard to comprehend what you did. Father, forgive me. I preach on it a lot, Lord God. Lord, I can only go through so much pain. He went through the pain and some of the sins of all humanity on your shoulders. Lord God, you left your son Jesus to suffer on that cross. And I and go into your presence, Lord God. And every brother and sister and everybody out here, Lord God, will be the same. So, Father, let's go out and give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Let's say thank you to you. Father, I ask you to do this, Lord God. I ask that you bless every person on this site tonight and everybody that's got to watch it, Lord God. Father, I ask that you bless those in Northern Ireland, Lord God. You bless Pastor Tom, Lynn, and the rest of the family. Father, you bless Anne, you bless Billy, and every other leader that's in that church, Lord God. Father, I ask that you give them wisdom, that you give grace and mercy in their lives. Father, I ask for wisdom, grace, and mercy for everybody on this site now, Lord God, that you fulfil your purpose in each one of them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I praise God for you coming on. Um, I, again, I just, time so flies. Um, I don't, I, I don't know other people ask me to do other things, you know, and I will do. Um, some people just want me to talk, some people want me to, 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 to preach the gospel. Amen, Mario, Tom, and Pastor Tom, and Tom, and I've got loads of Toms on tonight. And God bless you, you know, but we'll, we'll do so much. I say, on, I, I'll speak to Pastor Finnis when he's, he's preaching again. I say, the next few days we'll be going live on a multimedia thing. So it's going to be reaching tens and tens and millions of people. I think it goes out to two million people, it will do. Um, or it's got the prospect of being able to go out to too many people. Not everybody's a Christian, but um, when I do this, it's going to be more about the gospel. It's a gospel call. There's better preachers, there's better teachers out there than me. There's pastors, I've got system pastors, they're better than me at all of this. I just want to share about my Jesus. I want to share that you can actually meet with him. 
Um, they, they're going to do much more than that. I say, Tom, Pastor Tom, when he comes over, you want to hear him preach. Listen, he'll embarry still. If you haven't, if you can't, you need to go on it, right? Watch some of the, the preaching that he does. He's superb. And no, I'm not just saying this. I really, truly, it inspires me. And you will be inspired by listening to this pastor. Listen to some of his preaching. <coughs> and when he when he comes over, I, I've got another fellow here, Billy. Does he know his scripture? He knows it better than anybody else I know. I can't wait for him to come and talk to the lads. That's why he likes to just talk to the lads about scripture and about Jesus. And I've been honoured so many times that I've been over. But when you watch, go and watch Elam Bally Sillen. If you want to be encouraged, Elam Bally Sillen. Go on it. Watch the preaching from the pastor. And when he comes over to be live, I tell you, he's powerful. Really, seriously, powerful. God works through. And I'm not saying this to brag him up. I, I won't do that. It's very hard for me to say he's a good preacher and he's not a good preacher. But this man, he, when I say he's a man of God, he is a man of God. Um, and I don't know whether you can see what he's just there. Uh, oh, the other time up the top, that's how you spell Colin. <laughs> From past uh, Now, there's, there's only so many preachers I like to listen to. Tom's one of them. Um, and a couple of others I'm not going to mention. Um, I really do get refreshed from. Does that make sense? I really get refreshed and feel, you know, I'm full. I'm really full. And then I say, well, if I want me, me pudding or the second course, me cake and me custard, I'll listen to it again. And that's the way it is. We So we're looking forward to seeing him coming over with Billy, hopefully. Pray for Billy to come over. This is a man that, oh, he's such a gentleman. Um, again, I can only tell you my experience with all these people. We've had loads of people on here from all over the world that come just to, to, to listen to us. Um, I'm not going to go on, I'm just going to waste your time. So keep praying. We'll do, we're going to get some different preachers on. Uh, maybe, do you know what would be good, Pastor Tom? I'm sure he's got Skype. Do you know the brains of Pastor Tom? They start to fall out of his ears and everybody tries to scramble to get some because he's so brainy. And I'm serious about this one. Uh, maybe we can get him on Skype and he can give testimony of what's happening in his church and different things like that. It really would be good. So I will speak to him about it. And uh, maybe he can come on and, and, and he can preach. Because we can do that. We can, we can do that through what our programmes and everything here. Still getting into them. Anyway, let me pray. I want to pray for everybody. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. I pray for every person that's on here now, Lord God. Every one of them, Lord God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you bless them. That you fulfill your desire in their lives. Lord God, may you be blessed by each and every person that's on here now, Lord God. Father, we give you glory, we give you honour, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget, look out for Pastor Tom, um, in Elam, Bally, Stillam, Northern Ireland, uh, Belfast, and I promise you, you will, really, truly, will be blessed. And then when he comes over, I'll get him to lay hands on you and pray for you. He's been over a couple of times and I'm looking forward to him. May God bless you and may fulfill every desire in your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Thank you, Jesus.